All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming today. We really appreciate it. I know you guys are really busy being here at SHOT Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we decided this year to just kind of do an event to show off our new stuff um, just so that we can get everything out of the way and talk about all this once instead of uh, making like 50 different separate videos with everybody like we did last year. So yeah, so we'll go ahead and get into it here. Um, so let's go ahead and start and uh, talk about Olai just real quick. Um, so Olai started in 2007. Um, we have an R&D manufacturing sales team and uh, we developed so far into one of the top of the industry uh, lighting companies and we have a presence in over 80 countries with uh, offices, distributors, dealers, all that kind of stuff all over the world. Um, we carry a wide range of products uh, going from handheld flashlights to headlamps, weapon lights and accessories. Um, we have a presence in the outdoor hunting, military security and law enforcement channels and uh, actually year over year, we've uh, increasing our investment in R&D for 30% uh, each year, and we've achieved numerous patents um, while maintaining our status as a leading brand in the development of LED mobile lighting technology. So we invest a lot in R&D. We're trying to raise the bar, not only just for our own brand, but for the whole industry as a whole, okay? So let's jump in here. Um, real quick, these are some flagship lights going through the years. So we started with the T20, uh, the M20 from 2008, and uh, we actually just came out with the Warrior X, X meaning that we've been making the Warrior lights for 10 years. Um, so the M20 Warrior all the way to the 2018 Warrior X, which came out um, last year in December. Um, our first weapon light came out in 2015. We did the Peel Mini in 2017 and then we did the laser light last year, all right? Um, this is some of our stuff. So we got the US office listed here. Um, this is our office in Shenzhen. Um, we have our factory here, which is basically just a whole bunch of CNC machines with assembly as well. And then uh, we have a test facility as well with drop tests, water tests, this is kind of cool. This is a uh, water test as well. Um, and that's actually in the main office here. Marshall Hoots posted a couple of YouTube videos of, uh, of a tour in the uh yeah, he did. So if you guys want to go to YouTube, you can actually see a uh, tour of the office and our factory. Uh, if you guys want to check that out. Yeah. Um, cool. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the PL Mini 2. Um, a lot of you guys have actually received your test units, um, which we do appreciate that, you guys testing those and making videos on those. But for SHOT Show, our big thing today is we are talking about the PL Mini 2. And then after that, we'll go over some uh, some prototype stuff that maybe you guys haven't seen before. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, here is the, uh, the PL Mini 2 Valkyrie, and we'll show these to you. Um, so the PL Mini, if you guys didn't know, we did a really short run of that light in Desert Tan, and they sold out in like a couple hours. Uh, <laughs> so because of that, we decided to do a run uh, with Desert Tan immediately and just go ahead and offer them in both colors. Um, so there's that. All right. 
Okay, so the big thing on this one um, that we've never done before and never seen before is the fact that the rail system itself and the light are separate from each other and you can actually slide the light itself um, to match your specific firearm. Here's just a list of the, uh, the firearms that we have compiled and uh, we have tested it on all of these and they do fit. So previously the PL Mini only fit uh, handguns that had around a 3.8 inch barrel uh, or longer, um, but these actually fit a 3.3 inch barrel, even going smaller than that. So it fits subcompact stuff. So with the PL Mini, when it came out, um, I mean, the response was great and the PL Mini has been fantastic for us, but the issue has been is we get questions every day, tons of questions every day saying, well, will it fit this? Will it fit that? And we kind of thought to ourselves, okay, so this is a really small weapon light, but it's still, there's still a lot of firearms that it does not fit. Um, so we decided the only way to get a high performance light that will fit that is to make it where, you know, the rail itself is smaller than the light. Um, so that way you can adjust the light on the rail. Uh, okay, so this light has 600 lumens. Um, the, the original PL Mini had 400 lumens, so we got 200 more lumens, and this one has 100 meters of throw. Um, but the good thing about it is you still are getting the same run times as the original PL Mini, so you're just getting better performance out of this. So it can fit smaller guns, and you're getting higher performance. And that's really what we were going for. Um, we didn't want to compromise performance, even though we had to figure out how to make the light smaller. Um, so the light is just a hair chunkier, um, but it is a lot shorter. All right. um, and it still has the low battery indicator on the side, um, which is really cool. So if the, uh, if the battery is less than 10%, this will turn on and let you know. Um, I found this to be a problem with weapon lights is you just don't really know when they're gonna turn off, they just turn off. <laughs> Especially when it's pitch black, that's when it happens. Um, so I think this is really helpful. Otherwise, that light will not be on, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's not going to be you know, a sore thing to your eye. But at 10%, you do want to know. And then it also still has the magnetic charging. And then right here, this is the uh, same cable for the PL Mini. Um, so you can use the PL Mini cable if you have that. And this is red, and then it'll turn to green when it's fully charged. Okay, uh, quick install. Um, this is a really big one too. I hate having to pull a quarter out of my pocket and try and tighten it onto my rail or use a special tool. Um, also having to use a tool to remove a battery or something like that, there's a lot like that as well. Um, so this is a really quick attachment. Um, it's actually the same design as the PL2 laser version that came out last year, where not only do you have this arm, but also this expands as well when you push right here. So you can push it and open up the rail, put it on, that creates tension, and then you swing that arm, and that makes it really tight. And also when you swing that arm, it tightens the rail piece onto the actual teeth that this glides on when you move it back and forth. So I was actually skeptical <laughs> when they showed me the prototype, because I was like, okay, there's a lot of movement going on, like is this gonna get tight? Um, and it does, it actually gets really tight which is why we have a lot of them up here that we want you guys to check out um, if you haven't already. All right. Um, ambidextrous switch. So it does have a switch on each side uh, if you're left or right handed. And then also it's a downward press. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you hold it for momentary on. When you let go, it turns off. Or if you do just a quick tap, it'll be a constant on and there's no strobe on this one. I know some people like strobe, um, but from asking people for a small um, little compact weapon light, the majority of the people said, eh, I don't really want strobe, so. I know Garen Thumb, he, uh, he always says strobe is for raves, so. <laughs> All right, ultra compact and lightweight, so again, 600 lumens, um, max, so. Uh, it's one minute on the 600 lumen mode and it drops down for 60 minutes. So you are getting an hour of runtime. 
um, just to make sure it doesn't get too hot. It's got 100 meters of throw, 2500 candela. Um, dimensions is it's two inches in length, the actual light itself from the tip of the uh, switch to the front. All right, and then it has the lithium polymer battery that's built in. All right, and then uh, just talking about the switches, um, so you press it down to activate it. So we found that, and we've actually heard from instructors that some of the other lights on the market, when you put it in your holster, it might accidentally toggle it on real quick. Um, if you're hitting the sides of it, or if it's really sensitive, um, or if it has one of those um, ones where you kind of move it side to side like this. So with this, you have to press down to activate it. There's no side to side pressure, doesn't matter. So when you put it in your holster, appendix carrier, something like that, usually a light bearing holster has all of the tension on the light itself. So because of that, you don't want your light to turn on when you put it in the holster when it's pinching the sides of the light. So because of that, we figured for holster use, keep it low profile, then also make it where you can only activate it by pressing down so it doesn't accidentally flicker on or something like that when you put it in the holster. So. Okay, MSRP on both of these is $89.99. We decided to keep the price the same. Um, doesn't matter what color it is, it does have the same price. And we do have the introductory uh, offer on this coming up Monday, January 28th, when it comes out, and it's 30% uh, off, which makes them $62.99, which is a pretty ridiculous price for you know a full uh, aluminum body housing light that can fit any of your firearms um, with 600 lumens. All right, and then the inserts here, just to touch on that, so it still comes with the Glock style insert or the 1913. So if you do want to put it on like a little SBR or something like that, you can do that. Um, but otherwise, most of the new like striker fired handguns, stuff like that, um, they have more of like the slimmer profile notches, which works with the Glock one. So I know Springfields and stuff like that, they work with the Glock one. Um, so you'll have to just decide if there's any movement at all when you put it on. If there is movement, use the 1913 one. If it's really tight, then just leave it, all right? Okay, cool. So just quick summary on this light, 600 lumens. It can fit subcompacts. Um, you can adjust it. Um, it's got downward switches again. It's got the magnetic charging. It works with the same PL Mini charger. Um, it's got an hour runtime and uh, momentary and constant on. And it comes in both colors. And the Desert Tan version is not just a uh, one-time limited thing like before. It actually is going to be a normal run. All right. So do you guys have any questions about the... Uh, the PL Mini? Uh, yeah, just one. What's the average lifespan of the battery since you can't replace it? Um, it depends. <coughs> if you use it constantly every day, um, it can be two years or more, somewhere around there. Uh, so it's similar to a cell phone battery. Um, if you don't use it every single day, all the time, um, then it can last a really long time. So it just depends on how much you're using it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it is a protected cell, so you can just leave it charging on your nightstand or something like that if you want to. That's good. Yeah. So you're not going to damage it if you just leave it charging if you always want to make sure that it's ready. Are you working with holster companies? Um, yeah. So we have started sending these out to holster companies. Um, we have a holster company here in the back works um, with us today, and they decided to donate some, uh, some holsters. Um, so we're going to give some of those away here today. Um, but yeah, we are working with holster companies to make them. So the way that it works, um, since there is movement, uh, what we're saying is in order to get the, uh, in order for it to fit the best on here, when you put it on, just bring the light back to the trigger guard and then close it down that way. So when they make the holster, they're just going to have the light backed up to the trigger guard and just make it that way. So then when you buy a holster for this light, just know that you need to have the light in that position where it's pressed against the trigger guard. And that's how your holster was made. And that gives you more points of contact to make it more solid as well. Yeah. Yeah. Have you run across any guns that it doesn't like to fit? Sure, yeah. So there's there's a couple. So the P365 um, doesn't have oh, a proprietary rail. Yeah, it doesn't have a real rail. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have any notches. So because of that, um, 
we looked online and there actually is a lot of companies that are selling adapters. Um, so if you want, you can get like a Picatinny rail adapter for the P365 and then it'll fit on that. Um, so the length isn't the problem, it's just the fact that it's not a real rail. It's just like basically two slots on the side of the gun. Um, so that's one. Um, obviously Glock 43 and the shield, they don't have rails. Um, so it's not gonna fit that. Um, so it, we found that it's fitting all of the handguns that actually have a rail. Um, we tried the, uh, the Colt Mustang, that little tiny mouse gun, and that does have a notch on the front. Um, but we talked to a guy who owned one of those and he was just like, no one would ever put anything on this gun. <laughs> so I don't think that matters either. But the small stuff that people really do carry, like this is actually mine, so the VP9 SK, this is a 3.3 inch barrel and it fits perfectly on here. Um, the, uh, the XDSs, all of those, the new XDEs, uh, the little small Rugers, the small um, Tauruses, even the G2C, which has a ridiculously small rail that doesn't even look usable, it still fits on that one. So it's kind of crazy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, guys? Do you have any questions there? Uh, no, you just got a big thanks for answering the holster question there. I think that's a lot of people want to know. Yeah, I mean, we, we want to get holsters made for these, um, but that's kind of what we're telling everybody is it's like, okay, if you're going to make a holster for it, obviously the light needs to be in that set position all the time for it to fit right, because that's how the holster was made. So just back it to the trigger guard, and that makes it tighter anyways, and then just have it that way all the time. Yeah. Yeah. How receptive are Safari Land and Blackhawk and stuff to making holsters specific to the lights? Um, so Safari Land is really cool. Um, their director of sales, Dan, he uh, he's a fan of Olight and he carries one every day. So um, I've been talking with him and uh, he actually gave me, and uh, I can send it to you, he gave me a list of all of the holsters that Safari Land makes that the PL2 and the PL Mini fit. Um, I do need to send these PL Mini 2s to him, but Safari Land is, is good to go. Um, I would like to have them start making actual custom holsters for these, um, but that's more of just kind of a business conversation. Um, but the ALS and the RDS and all of their duty style stuff does fit. Um, and it, I know it will fit with these ones because they're even smaller. Um, so those more universal ones where it kind of clicks into the trigger um, instead of clicking onto the light, um, those ones are going to work anyways. Yeah, the ALS, you don't even need a light on it. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. It's just a big open body and you can just show them. So, but yeah, hopefully we will get custom stuff made by Safari Land, um, but that's more of just, you know, having meetings with them. But it is a good sign that they like us and we've talked with them and, and that kind of thing. So. Yep. Uh, any other questions about the PL Mini 2? I know some of you guys like already have it, and so I didn't know if you're playing around with them or want to know something about it or anything like that. <laughs> Works great. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah, I've shot a lot with it, and I think that worked really well. It's surprising how tight they are when you can move them around like that. So I guess what output does it drop down to after the first minute? Uh, I think it's 60, 60 lumens, I believe. Yeah, it's 60 lumens. You can ramp it back up after it's You can, yeah, so it's thermal. So it just depends on how hot the light itself is. Um, and it doesn't help that it's on the very front of the gun, um, which is hot as well. Um, so there's that going on, but we want to make sure that you don't damage your hands by touching the light or the light doesn't get damaged by getting too hot. So I think I've got like two and a half minutes. Yeah, and that's... I would have fired just with dry, dry Yeah, and that's just, we just say that. Typically the numbers that we say too are less than what you're actually getting. Um, when we have third party, like the really big flashaholic guys on like candle power forums and stuff like that, they always do like crazy analysis of our lights and it always ends up being more lumens than we actually said um, so we typically underrate our products um, so that we can you know give you more than than we even said so there's a less lethal jpx pepper gun 
and I've been playing with the with the mini on that to have a light on that as well. And it, it, it's spectating and fits. I, I can fit any of my whole lights on. Really? On that less lethal. That's cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll send you some pictures. Yeah, I mean, even the PL Mini, and we have all of the lights that we offer up here as well, not just the PL Mini 2s, so you can do, like, size comparisons and look at that. Um, but they're pretty universal anyways. I mean, all of our lights, every single one we make fits on Glock 19s, P320s, all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, it's just amazing how many times people have asked us, like, does it fit this, does it fit that? And they're, they're these tiny little guns that people carry especially down south where it's hot all the time and you don't want to carry massive guns and shorts and gym shorts and stuff like that. Um, so this is kind of our way to be able to carry a small gun with a powerful light. Sean, will you, will you, excuse me, will you phase out the mini, the original? No, we're going to keep making it. We're going to keep making it as long as it sells. It's still selling really, really well. Um, so, you know, we're going to keep producing it. Yeah, there's, we're not stopping that. Because um, some people would rather have a PL Mini on their Glock 19 because it fits their Glock 19. Um, you know, right now there's quite a few holster companies that are making uh, holsters for PL Minis and PL 2s. So there's more of that as well at this moment. Um, obviously, everyone who's making holsters for PL Minis and PL 2s, we want them to make it for the PL Mini 2s as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a process for that, you know, because they got to make molds and it, you know it's. If they're doing foam press or vacuum seal, vacuum takes longer because they have to make molds and do all this kind of stuff. So it just depends on the holster company's workflow as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, as long as we're still selling the uh, the peel minis, we're gonna keep making them, and we are. So yeah. Cool. Anything else on the peel mini twos? Go there. Okay. Cool. All right, so we'll go ahead and get into some of the stuff you guys don't know about, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so here we have the M1T Plus. All right, so if you guys know the M1T, it's a single CR123A light, um, but we decided to make a two CR123A light. Um, so this one is 800 lumens instead of 500 lumens. It still has the direct to high, um, or you can go to a low mode as well. Uh, but these are kind of made for, uh, they can fit in the uh, little scout mounts, um, which is nice. Uh, so this is just a really low cost way to be able to have, you know, high lumen, just real quick access light for, uh, for a little rifle. Yeah. So no frills, just real simple, 2CR light, 800 lumens, um, and it fits in scout mounts, so it'll fit in that. We also make our own offset mounts. Um, so if you don't have a specific mount that you want to use it with, we do have these, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll show you here. So on my rifle, I actually have this sitting on top of the rail. Since this part is so low profile, um, it actually, my sights are over it. So this doesn't get in the way. Even if you have like um, some glass on your on your AR or something like that, it's still going to show over this because this is so low. Um, so you can just put this on the top of your rail and then just have this sit on the side. Yeah. But if you have your own kind of mount, you can just slide this into it as well. You can take this clip off and just slide it in. So, yep. Uh, but a lot of people ask for like a higher output, higher runtime version of the M1T. And so that's what this is. So the M1T Plus. Um, this should be coming out in the next couple months. All right. Does anybody have any questions about the M1T Plus? Yeah. It's a one-inch diameter? Um, it's a little bit smaller than that, actually. So it won't necessarily fit all standard scope mounts kind of thing? Um, not all. I mean, you can put like some foam tape in it or something like that. Um, but this is pretty small. I think it's like 0.9 instead of 1. Yeah. It's the same as the, um, as the M1T because it takes two CRs. But if you look at some of the competitors and stuff like that, they make a lot of lights that are two CRs. So it's going to have that same similar type of diameter. Yeah. You can still use two rhetoricals in it though, right? If you want to. You can do two RCRs, yeah. Um, but it is too small for an 18650. Yeah. And again, this is for rifles and that kind of stuff. So two CRs, that has a 10 year shelf life. So if you're going to put this on a gun and just throw it in your safe and then you look at it 
you know, once a year or something like that, which is what a lot of people do when they have 30 rifles. But um, you want it to turn on when you come back to it after a year. So that's kind of the point of this. If you're going to be using it all day, every day, um, then obviously you're going to want to put RCRs in it so you don't keep running through batteries. Um, yeah, because the M1T with a rechargeable only goes for like 20 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if you want to use the M1T just as like an EDC or something like that, then yeah, you're going to run through a CR. Which you can use like the micro USB rechargeable battery or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're just going to throw those on a rifle and just forget about it, uh, two CRs is great because it's always going to work, even after several years of not looking at it. Um, cool, so that is the, uh, the M1T Plus. Uh, let's see here, we can move on to here. So this is, uh, this is the R50 Pro 2. Um, we're not sure if we're gonna keep that the same name because it is a lot different than the R50 Pro. Um, it's actually much smaller. Um, but this comes with three XPL LEDs and it is uh, 3200 lumens. R50 Pro Compact. I know, right? Yeah, something like that. I mean, this isn't finalized. This is a prototype. Keep in mind, guys, so this actually is pretty close. Um, so this probably won't change very much since it's just a bigger design of, of something that we've made before. Um, this is a totally new anime, though. So um, we might change the milling patterns. We might change the name. Um, but we will be coming out with something like this. But uh, it uses the regular MCC charging cable. Um, so if you have an S1R2 or an S30R3 or an S2R or anything um, that's currently using the, uh, the MCC magnetic charging cable, um, this is going to work with it. So even though this is a little bit bigger light, 3200 lumens, you can still use the same cable as your regular EDC lights. Which is Are you cool. planning on doing like a rapid charging dock port too? Like uh, we may. I know as of this moment, this is what we have. Um, so you can just drill this into a wall or uh, it's going to come with three in tape, um, but you can just do that if you want to have it upside down or you can just have it this way. And so the way that it works is um, you can plug the MCC cable up to here and then it will charge through that. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty fired up about that one. Yeah. Even as a concept, that one's pretty cool. Yeah. So you'll just plug your cable here. All right. And it will come with a longer cable because um, I know these little... MCC cables are really short because uh, these are kind of for on the go. But uh, but yeah, we're going to have a, a longer cable for it as well. Yeah, at least a meter. Huh? Come with it or not? Come with it, for sure. Yeah. Our lights come with everything. I mean, we always have batteries that come with it. If it's a rechargeable light, it does come with a charger. Yeah. So this one will come with some kind of dock, um, the battery, which we'll talk about in a second here, and then the charging cable uh, come with the screws if you want to screw it in your garage or you know, something like that. Sean, question on the uh, R50. I carried the R50, the original one, on my duty belt. Yeah. I work third shift. The one problem I run into is, is there's two flat spots opposite each other. So when I need it to index that switch at night, sometimes it can be tricky. Is there any way you might be able to sink one side or set it two flat spots so you can be just the uh, switch side flat? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to figure out kind of how we're going to design, like, you know how each side looks and how that's interfacing, but like well, Newton's law, every time I pull it out and I need it quick, I pull the wrong side. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's like it has not failed yet. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's like a USB. Right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Harvard grads sure. just sitting there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it would be good to kind of have a way to, to see it better. So this one does actually have a uh, LED, so a mode indicator here, and then a battery indicator here which is similar to the, uh, the X9R. So it's almost like a little miniature X9R. Um, so you can see here, so you have your battery level indicator on the right side. So we have, what, four LEDs here. Each LED gives you 25% uh, of the battery. So this one's fully charged. So we have 100%. If it's only showing two lights, you have 50% battery level light. So uh, similar to the X9R, you guys have seen those. Um, so battery indicator here and then your lumen level um, will be over here, all right? I think it's pretty bright. All right, so even though the light's tiny, you're always gonna know your battery level in real time, and then also what mode that you're on. Yeah. So it takes regular MCC, charging cable, 
Uh, it's got the indicators there, three XPL LEDs, 3200 lumens, and then the battery that comes in it is really interesting. In order for us to be able to do that with such a small body, um, it actually comes with a 21700 battery, all right, which is 5,000 milliamps in a battery this small. So this is just a little bit bigger than an 18650, but it has a higher milliamp than a 26650 battery, which is in the R50 Pro, which is gigantic. Um, so these batteries are kind of insane. I know they're starting to like use these in Teslas and stuff like that, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, proprietary battery on here, uh, but again, I mean, the performance is crazy. Really good run times with 5,000 milliamps. So sure. when you say it's proprietary, does it have like proprietary terminals or? Yeah, so right here, if you see, there's kind of this little, uh, little lip here for the button. No, it's okay. Yeah, there's a little lip here for the button and that allows it to be able to be charged through the tail cap. So if you use like a flat top 21700 or something like that, it's still not gonna be able to charge can we, can we see the other through side? the tail cap. Uh, it's, oh, so okay, it's not uh, you know, like universal. It's like there's a... Yeah, and you can you can check it out too um, when we're done here. But, uh, but yeah, so it has this little lip here on the button top and that allows it to make contact with the tail cap uh, in order to let it charge with the MCC cable. So it'll still work with a different 21700 if you happen to have those. Um, but so you uh, can buy, buy 21700s? Yeah, you can now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're going to sell them separately as well. Because obviously if you're going to invest in this light, you might want to have a few batteries. With There's it. more and more lights that are coming to 21700s. So like the it's future. the future. There's yeah. going to be customers who have we're going to have multiple lights that are going to power and they're going to want to be able to use whatever battery and whatever light they're going to Yeah, and it'll still work um, and it'll still be able to get to 3200 lumens with that. Um, but again, it has that little lip and you can check it out. But um, So basically, if you put it in another cell, it won't work either. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it has this uh, these rubber grip finger grooves here on the sides. We might change that and just put it on the back here. Um, we've even looked at doing some like crazy machining like on the S1 R2 with like little diamond uh, type of machining all over it. So we've looked at a lot of different options on how we want to machine this thing and put these rubber grips on there. Uh, but this is, again is just kind of a prototype body for it. But in terms of performance and battery and charging and all of that, that's going to be a constant. So uh, we're going to be using these LEDs, uh, regular MCC charger as well. And 3200 lumens is that pretty hot? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so it's a, about a minute on there before it starts to gradually drop down. Um, the problem is that really the only way to get away with having the light not get as hot but still have super huge lumens is to just make the light bigger. Um, but we wanted to make it smaller and just as bright. So it's kind of this, it's like the demon for the lighting industry is that the light has to be huge to have really long run times at a super bright level. So there's this, you know, we're always trying to battle and say, okay, how small of a light can we make where it'll have huge lumens, but also it won't get so hot that it's gonna burn your hand off or something like that. So yeah, this is kind of the best that we could do at this moment in time on Earth. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, new batteries will keep being developed. Elon Musk will keep making you know cool batteries and stuff like that that we can use for uh, for these lights. So yeah, but at only about 30 seconds less at 3,200 lumens, you're getting a way smaller light. Um, so I think that's not that bad of a of a sacrifice to have you know a much better form factor than the R50 Pro. What's the price point? I'm not sure yet. What about the, the beam better? Because now if you're using three LEDs instead of one, does it create a different beam better? Or so one? they told me that the throw is actually the same. So they've been able to, to get the same distance. Yeah. Um, the beam pattern on the R50 Pro, since it has an orange peel reflector, is kind of wide anyways. It does have a little bit deeper of a reflector, a little bit larger. Um, but the way that it's designed gives it to where it's kind of a wide beam anyways. Um, so with these, uh, you know, three LEDs with smaller reflectors, um, you know, they're still getting that same performance. So throwers and stuff like that, which we'll talk about next. Um, but in a light this size, you know, you're looking for just an all-around nice. Is your 50, the regular 50 in the same production? 
again, it's kind of like the PL Mini, where you know we'll keep making it as long as they sell. Um, the R50 Pro is definitely one of our best sellers, so because of that, we'll probably keep making it for a while, but eventually it'll end up getting phased well, out. The use cases are sort of different. You know, that that basically is the flutter. And the R50 has a nice deep reflector or single emitter, so it's got good throw. Right. They're just, despite just the sizes, they have very different, I, I haven't played with that yet, but I assume very different beam profiles. Um, yeah, I mean, this does have a wider beam, but it still has pretty good throw to it. Um, and I mean, after this, we can turn all the lights off and check these out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, hopefully we won't phase that one out. You know, I really like the PL Mini in the original R50 Pro, so we would like to keep making it. But, I mean, if this starts killing those products, then, you know, eventually they'll get phased out. R50 Pro 2. The 2170. <laughs> yeah. Smaller. And, a um, and again, I kind of want to change the name because it's a different kind of light. Um, but as of right now, that's kind of what it is. Um, but yeah, R50 Pro Compact, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Um, maybe something like that. So it's kind of a battle with the, with the up tops, you know, to try and <laughs> change the name. I think the word mini would throw people off because that's not the like mini, yeah. you know, it's so common. No, yeah, but it is really small. I mean, you can put this in your pocket. Putting multiple variants again? Um, Standard in the law enforcement? Oh, um, I'm not sure, actually. I know this is kind of the standard version, and this is going to come with something like this. Um, it's not adequate for a vehicle map, though, really, is it? I mean, you can knock it off. Yeah. I mean, it is pretty tight. I mean, it's it's pretty good, but it's still uh, prototype. I mean, if you ran into it, then yeah. <coughs> and it's still prototype based. Yeah. So, you know, we might make some more kind of like a dock kind of thing that holds it like this. Uh, but as of right now, this is what we have. So. Well, when I came up and I saw that it said R50, I got excited. So you might want to stick with that name because you're going to have a big, you know, customer base that already has R50. I know. That's the that thing. I mean, so when they hear it, they're going to be like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't yeah, know. I would stick with the R50. Yeah, same thing with the PL Mini. The PL Mini is a flagship light for us, um, so you know a lot of people know that name. So because of that, I would change the PL Mini too.